welcome again to the first module on ECCE in India. Having understood the philosophy of early education right from conventional to contemporary period, it becomes important to know how is the existing philosophy of ECCE that had been derived from the contributions of eminent educationists. Seven eminent educationists are said to be the contributors of philosophy of preschool education. Let us have a glimpse of the viewpoint of the seven educationists and how it got recognized as a universal philosophy of ECCE. The first person is Frederick Froebel. Froebel opened a new chapter in the history of preschool education with a concept that's called as kindergarten. In other words, it's a German term meaning garden of children. He came up with the motto, come let us live for our children. As per Froebel, play was the essence of all activities of a child in a school. He firmly believed that as the growth of entire tree depends on the seed, the whole growth of the child depends on the personality that is hidden in him. This personality had to be nurtured by creating a congenial atmosphere by the teacher, just as a gardener nurtures the seed. The second person is Maria Montessori. The basic idea behind Montessori's system of education was to provide real life experiences for the child to stimulate their senses with a strong emphasis on the importance of freedom in the learning situation with limited guidance. Her system of education stressed upon two major things. One is self-control and the second one is self-directed activity. The activities designed were in such a way that the social values such as cooperation and sharing were inculcated in children at their early years itself. The third eminent educationist is John Dewey. Dewey is the founder of the concept laboratory school. Most of you doing the human development major would have known what is a laboratory school. But the concept got derived from Dewey. He opened up a school and experimented with the methods of learning and discovered more natural ways of teaching as well as learning. The school also adopted the problem solving method of learning wherein the child would be given challenges of certain life situations and facilitated to solve it. Hence Dewey's philosophy also supported self-study through discovery similar to Montessori philosophy. Now as our chapter deals with early childhood care and education in India, we have to really look into some of the eminent educationist views from India. The one person is Mahatma Gandhi. Gandhiji's philosophy of education stated that true education is something that brings up the best in a child in terms of body heart, mind and spirit. He also added that a sound education should have the capacity to tap the physical, intellectual and emotional faculties of a child. It was with this idea that the government of India reframed the concept of basic education as an education for life and an education through life. Then it's Rabindranath Tagore. The two primary views of Tagore are the realization of harmony between life and environment and freedom or liberation. He strongly believed that these two aspects allow a man to relate himself with the universe and joyful learning. Later with his view, he designed a model school called Shanti Niketan. In other words, it's a board of peace. The ancient Gurukul system of education was adopted for this model school. He also advocated three principles in a school system, namely freedom, fullness and vastness in his curriculum 
for the holistic development of children. Then it was Gujbai Badeka who set in. Gujbai, with his ideology on real education, started a school called Bal Mandir. He strongly believed that a child's individuality has to be respected and that the role of an adult is to just guide him in the right direction. Though started with Montessori materials to facilitate learning, he later designed inexpensive and locally available tools and made use of it. Gujuboy was followed by Tarabai Modak. She is said to be a pioneer in child-based welfare programs and preschool education system in India. Her task of setting up preschools in the rural areas, catering the needs of local children has to be really appreciated. It was Tara Bai who evolved the concept of Anganwadi or courtyard or open space, wherein a motherly village woman trained in basic principles of children and designing play materials would devote time for the welfare of the children of that area. It was with these eminent educationist contributions, the ECCE today has got certain philosophy with it. The first philosophy is basic education for all irrespective of their socio-economic status. The second is that education should cater to the holistic development of children addressing each and every domain of development. The third is that a blended method of teaching learning should be adopted in such a way that every child's individuality is respected and taken care of. The last philosophy is that certain elements, namely freedom and joy in learning, social and human values inculcation, fostering self-control and self-discipline should be the core of any sort of education. In the previous video, the demographic and the developmental perspectives of why should we focus on early years was explained to you. Now after knowing the basic philosophy that should encompass early childhood care and education, let us understand its concept. You all very well know that learning begins at birth and the home becomes the first place of learning. Early childhood care and education is a term that refers to the bucket of integrated stimulating activities or experiences designed for children of 0 to 6 years to foster their holistic development, care and learning. ECCE is also conceptualized by the National Policy on Education into two components. The first component is early stimulation for the children of 0 to 3 years. The second component is that providing an organized centered based preschool education for children of 3 to 6 years. The second component of ECCE, what we call it as preschool education, as of today, exists in the form of nursery schools, kindergartens or proprietary schools without the health and nutrition component and is being taken care by the private sector for almost 90% of the existing programs. The first component along with preschool education is a feature of ICDS that is Integrated Child Development Services in India. ICDS is a governmental initiative. ICDS has already told to you it adopts a life cycle approach by targeting the adolescent girls, mothers as well as the child's all round development. So, the terms care and education in early childhood care and education are inseparable as both are essential and reinforce each other to create a strong foundation for a child's subsequent or continuous learning and holistic well-being. The component care includes health, nutrition and hygiene in a secure nurturing environment. The component education would provide stimulation, socialization, guidance, participation, learning 
and developmental activities. UNESCO refers to the widely used term ECCE as a range of processes and mechanisms that sustain and support development during the early years of life. It encompasses education, physical, social and emotional care, intellectual stimulation, health care and nutrition. It also includes the support a family and community need to provide children's healthy development. Now my dear students, the most vital question that has to be answered is how an education imparted at the age of 2 and 3 years be the precursor of productive adulthood. In a blog written by Scott Ozaras for World Bank, it was stated that research had shown that learning gap between advantaged and disadvantaged children that shows up as early as 9 months of age. The research has also shown that a child's level of mass knowledge in preschool predicts their academic performance at primary and secondary level. An overview of 56 studies across 23 countries that found that ECCE program can have a profound impact on health, education, cognitive ability and emotional development. A study by Nobel laureate James Heckman found that participants in an early childhood program in Jamaica had 25% higher wages 20 years later. With all these inputs, UNICEF has also pointed out that investing in early childhood development is the best investment and the reasons that have been cited are that the first it is, it's proven that children who receive proper care, nutrition and stimulation in the first five years do much better in school and life. And it also could see children earn 25% more as adults. It could also see helping the children's brain grow strong and healthy. UNICEF also adds that the brain of a child who is nourished and nurtured, read to and played with, protected from factors like stress and conflict, has the best chance of developing its potential. Moreover, UNICEF endorses the suggestion of researchers related to early childhood development that the return on investment is around 30% per year. Hope this section of the module would have made you comprehend the concept of ECCE and its importance with the philosophy derived from the significant educationist view. The next chunk of video would elaborate on the legal framework, policy issues and challenges of ECCE. Thank you.